Hey guys, it's Will from Lowry Duelists bringing you another two, uh, another new top 10. So I was actually pleasantly surprised with how well our last top 10 did. Um, all I did was pretty much rant about my top 10 most hated monsters in the game, and it actually did pretty well. Usually our discussion videos don't really do well. Uh, most people usually watch um, our Monday matchups or full power matchups, and then any BLS vid we post because BLS, I don't know why. He just, he's the reason why our channel has anything above 300 subscribers for some reason. We hit it off with BLS. But anyway, so uh, I thought I would do another discussion video uh, in the time being. I'm trying to get access to Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2. I'm having a lot of difficulty getting that with Mac. Uh, so if any of you guys have gotten it to where it's easier or anything like that with Mac, let, let me know comments because uh, that would be immens immensely appreciative of that but anyway uh, so I, I thought I'd do another top 10 video for you guys and then you can expect some more uh, deck profiles and then also uh, I think Noah is actually going to be making a spellbook def deck profile uh, soon so you, can, you guys can expect that one and then on top of that uh, we're also going to be doing some new full power matchups we I'd like to admit some of the requests and uh, we definitely plan on getting those done it's just that you know there's only two to three of us at times sometimes it's just me producing content on the channel so uh it's it's and i i have other stuff other obligations that i won't talk about um but you know i i still try to do this as a hobby and i still try to produce for you guys um who actually follow us um we're and i i can name specific people in the comments that i always see and i'm I'm happy to see you guys when you guys comment and stuff like that. Um, so, anyway, we'll get into my top 10 most hated archetypes. Uh, this is basically archetypes, decks, whatever you want to call it. These are just decks that I really don't like playing against, and if I had the choice, uh, would not play against at all. Uh, so, we'll go and start off with number 10, and that's. <laughs> it's Flower Cardian. So, a lot of people might immediately be, you know, squinting or, you know, scratching their heads or, you know, turning their heads like, did I see that right? Flower Cardians? Yeah. Flower Cardians. The reason why I hate this deck is not because it's OP, because it's not. It's not because it spams the same move. It's not. It's actually a very cerebral deck. Uh, but the reason why I hate it is because I don't know what the fuck it does. I don't know what the fuck they do. I don't know what the fuck they win with. I don't know what the fuck they do. And that's pretty much the reason, only reason why I hate Flower Cardians. Because I'll usually be going first and I summon like Cyber Dragon Infinity, Blue Eye Spirit, you know, and summon Blue Eyes from Deck Pass. And my opponent's activating Flower Cardians. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, and every single one of their cards has like a, a three page, three paragraph like effect. Like every single one of their cards. And a lot of the times, if I'm not playing a competitive match or anything like that, I don't bother reading the cards. So I'm like, okay, well, no, 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 no. okay, yeah, I guess I'll let that through because I don't know what's going to happen, but it doesn't seem very threatening or imminent. And then he summons like three monsters, like a level 10, level 7, level 3, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I should have negated that or stuff like that. And then he's doing all this other stuff, and I'm like, ooh, uh, do I negate that, or is it too late to negate stuff? Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what Flower Cardians do. Every one of their cards is way too long to read. I don't feel like reading their cards. And they have like a 10 minute turn, and like, ugh, they're always just doing stuff, and I have no idea what they're doing. I still, to this day, do not know what the heck Flower Cardians do, what they accomplish, what they even are meant to do. Because most of the time, I just, I'm too lazy to read the cards when I'm, when I'm playing a Flower Cardian guy. And he's doing stuff, and he's doing stuff, and he has like a 10 minute turn, and he's doing all this stuff, and I'm like, I don't know what to negate, I don't know if I should max C now, I don't know what to do with the heck right now, I'm just gonna like, let him do stuff, and I'm gonna hope that it was the right play, and most of the time, I don't know, I mean, Flower Cardians aren't that meta anyway, they're, in fact they're not, but God, the only reason I hate them is mainly 10 minute turns, don't know what the hell they do, don't want to read their cards, and I lose to them sometimes, literally just because I've never, I, because of just matchup inexperience, and I'm like, wow, that was really stupid. I could have prevented all that had I negated that thing like 10 turns ago, or um, 10 plays ago, but anyway, yeah, Flower Card hands for that reason, so uh, that was on a lighter note. Number nine, on a more serious note, I really did not like ABC, um, especially pre-link ABC, <coughs> excuse me, Simply because I don't like decks that play themselves, and ABC was the epitome of a deck that played itself. It was by far one of the most helmet decks I've ever, you know, come across in my head. Like, you could play an ABC guy, and you could literally call out their plays 
before it happened, and you were going to be right. Like, oh, activate Union Hanger, okay. Probably going to add A or B or C, most likely A, okay. Oh, you Special Thrasher, okay. Probably going to normal that, you know, normal that A. Okay, normal that A, probably going to equip B from that deck, right? Okay, yep, we did that. Oh, let me guess, Sukiyomi next, yep. Sukiyomi effect, pitch, draw into strikes, warnings, and D barrier set, summon Buster Dragon pass. Yep, I, I pretty much knew that was going to happen. It was always the same first turn with ABC, and that was the most annoying aspect. There was no diversity. Like, they literally had no diversity in their plays. They didn't open Union Hanger. They busted. Like, no pun intended. And that's, that's like, what I don't hate. I mean, that's what I hate about, hated about ABC. It was all the same shit over and over and over. They never had any diversity. Sometimes they had Summer of Rafflesia, and I'm like, okay, finally, something different than the standard play. But if they did not draw Union Hanger, they pretty much were like, oh, well, crap, pass. And I'm like, okay, yeah. It's like, I just hate decks that do one thing and are meant to do one thing, one thing only. And, uh, yeah. ABC was pretty much an example of that. And on top of that, Buster Dragon was just a bitch. Like, he was just really hard to deal with. Like, banished during either player's turn, and then every single one of them plussed off in the graveyard when you destroy the little ones, and then you send them back to the graveyard to summon Buster Dragon again next turn, so... Buster Dragon and ABC overall um, was a deck I was never really fond of, primarily just because it was so autopilot. Like everybody did the same thing, everybody did the same first turn play. It was, there was no diversity at all. So yeah, number eight, Spellbooks. But when Spellbook of Judgment was legal, now granted, I'm not one of those players that's salty about Spellbook of Judgment just because of all the end phase pluses you get. The only thing I was ever salty about when it came to spellbooks was special summoning Jowgan at the end phase. That was the only the only problem I have with Spellbook of Judgment. To be honest with you, right now, and I'm probably going to get a lot of flack with this, spellbooks inherently are a shitty deck. They're not good. The only thing that made them good was being able to summon a Jowgan from their deck to where you couldn't special summon, because basically you realistically only had to play through like one spellbook of fate or maybe like a solemn or something like that but that's not hard to play through especially nowadays like that's not hard to play through at all the only thing that made it difficult to play through was the fact that they had it backed up with spellbook of judgment because you'd have to if you can't special summon you can only normal and then you know, normal your monster and they get banished and so you're like oh well crap i can't special summon for the rest of the turn so i guess i'll just have to pass and then he plays all his pluses cards and beefing up all his monsters and stuff like that and then eventually they win but realistically and this is just my opinion and, and a lot of people might think it's different but like i have no fits with spellbook of judgment and you're like yeah it's it can be like a huge plus at the end phase like we're talking about plus five plus six in some in some situations but the only issue i have with spellbook of judgment was the fact that it special summoned a Jowgan from the deck because if you took away that special summoning clause you could put Spellbook of Judgment at three and I would have no issues with it. I would be like no okay fine. I can play through one Spellbook of Fate and possibly a Solemn in the event that I don't have to in the event that I can special summon. That was the only thing that made me salty about Spellbooks is that the fact that they'd summon a Jowgan from the deck. In fact I would advocate that Spellbooks aren't would not be good had they not had that Jowgan defense. Because Dragon Ruler players, the only thing they feared was that Jowgan. They would side in Tsukiyomi, and once they did, when they flipped that Jowgan face down, they went ham on Spellbooks. And Spellbooks really didn't have a response because they could only really stop one play per turn with Spellbook of Judgment. I'm sorry, yeah, Spellbook of Judgment. I'm sorry, <laughs> Spellbook of uh, Fate. I might have been calling Spellbook of Fate uh, a different name this entire time. But yeah, Spellbook of different Spellbook of Fate. You can only banish one card. Like, case in point, Dark Magician is not a very good deck because it only banishes one card of your opponent's with Dark Magical Circle per turn. Now, Fate, yeah, it doesn't target, but your opponent's going to have more than one play. The only thing that made it difficult against Spellbooks is that you couldn't Special Summon. So, I just never liked playing against a Spellbook guy when he would activate Spellbook of Judgment, not because he was going to get a lot of pluses at the end phase, because he's going to summon that damn Jowgan from the deck. And I'm like, well, shit, now I can't Special Summon. I could try to normal summon to get over to Jowgan, but he's just going to banish me, banish me with Spellbook of Fate to where I really can't get over this board right now. And that was pretty much the only issue that I had with Spellbooks uh, was the Jowgan. I don't have an issue with them now because they can't do it with Spellbook of Judgment anymore. And I honestly think that Spellbook of Judgment can come back to like two. And like, I would shit, I would even put it at three if they took away that special summon phase. It was the only reason why Spellbooks were good, in my opinion, was Jowgan. That was literally it. Anyway unpopular opinion, I'm probably going to get a lot of fight for it. 
All right, so number, uh, this is, let's see, uh, sorry, I should have numbered these. 10, 9, 8, number 7, Cleeforts. I am very unfond of decks that don't let you play, that main a lot of floodgates, aka Jalgen, and stuff like that. And Cleeforts is like the epitome, man. Three skill drain, three vanities, lose one turn, like, ugh, like, nobody wants to have to play through that, and they were unaffected by virtually all of it because they pendulum summon and then normal their monsters, and their pendulum monsters have effect on the extra deck to bounce your stuff or to destroy your stuff and stuff like that. It was just pretty annoying to deal with, and so, um, you know, Cleeport Scout being a once per turn, plus one, like, yeah, the deck was just pretty annoying to go against, and the main reason why I just hated going against it was the skill drains, the vanities, emptinesses, is... Uh, the lose one turns like I hate continuous floodgates and I hate deck like those kind of floodgates the ones that don't let me play uh, and so and the, the, when this deck was really really good uh, there was no twin twister uh, there was just pretty much MST and then you can maybe side in Malcat against them or fairy win uh, but my god this deck was annoying to play against it still is pretty annoying to play against it's not near as consistent now and it's not near as good with links but um, yeah, Cleeforts are not a deck that uh, I'm ever really a fan of, mostly just because of continuous floodgates, so, yeah. Alright, next on the list, for a similar situation, you're going to see a, most likely, you're, you're probably going to see a, you know, a continuing trend with all this stuff, is that I really hate decks that just, uh, back row heavy decks that, especially ones with, you know, floodgates and stuff like that, but Magic Spectres were like the first Pendulum deck, other than, I guess you can consider Cleeforts, that I really fucking hated. I fucking hated Magic Spectres. Anytime I played a Magic Spectre guy, I need summon Mumbuku or activate, um, you know, that, that field spell there, I would be like, oh god, this is gonna suck. Because Magic Spectres were like the epitome of like when Pendulums really started to get OP and started to become a really like a problem. Like, um, because none of them can be targeted or destroyed by card effects, and every single one of them was a plus one upon summon. So they would all search their traps and stuff like that, and they'd play their skills and summon their monsters. And it's when they were normal or special summon was a thing like that. So like you didn't have to waste a normal summon on them to get their effects. So the thing I hated about the most is that they, you know, they'd all summon each other and like set a bunch of back row and pass. And yeah, they're like 1,200 monsters that really aren't affected by stuff. But you know when you try to summon a monster, they'll you know tempest it or they'll tornado it and stuff like that. And you know. If they weren't pendulum monsters, I wouldn't have a deal with it because you're like, okay, he's having to use a card to take out one of mine. That's fair. That's reasonable and stuff like that. He used two cards on one of mine, so that's fair. But they are the pendulum monsters. They go back to the extra deck, and as long as they have scales, which most likely they are going to have scales, they're gonna all come back the next turn, and they're all gonna search the same damn traps, poke away at your life points, and then set the same damn traps. And they're like, okay, well, crap, let's try this again. Let's special summon a monster. It gets negated with Tempest. All right, let's try this one. Gets banished with Tornado. And you're like, well, shit, I'm out of plays again, but he at least his, he, at least his, his field is empty. My field's empty, but his is too. Nope, because he's got scales. He's going to just pendulum summon them back and search the same damn traps. And, uh, like, that's pretty much how I felt about Magic Spectres. They were just a deck that was, ugh. And that's one good thing, and this is kind of probably a topic for another video, that I think was good that came out of Lynx, was the hindrance on pendulums. Because with pendulums, and I always thought the mechanic was just a little bit OP, and I think that everybody can acknowledge it was a little bit OP. If you were playing pendulums, uh, at least a consistent pendulum deck like Magic Specters or Metal Foe Yang Zing, or Metal Foe, um, or uh, Pepe when it was especially oh my god especially Pepe when it was a full power you had an inherent advantage because you were playing a pendulum deck literally every single one of your monsters that went from the field of even even synchro monsters even monsters used for synchro mon synchro summon went back to your extra deck to where if you're opposing a uh, pendulum player they could literally just pendulum summon five pass and then you board wipe them but they just special summon them all back literally just because they have scales, so you're like, okay, what was the point of me board wiping them because they're still on the field and they're, they're basically going to summon Castells and stuff like that to destroy my monsters and Ignisters and stuff like that. Uh, so 
pendulums, you had to deal with both the monsters themselves and the scales. And if you didn't manage both, you were likely going to lose the match because if you don't deal with the monsters, they're just going to OTK you. And if you didn't deal with the scales, they're just all going to come back the next turn to basically get rid of you. And that's why I'm, I actually am a proponent of the link aspect of at least its hindrance on pendulums because yeah if they should go back to the extra deck you shouldn't be able to just pendulum summon them back it's like basically a soul charge once per turn without even the you know restriction on battle phase clause so uh ma basically magic specters were like start of my kind of vivid animosity toward pendulum decks just because of their inherent advantage of being better um because literally of all my monsters go back to the extra deck so anyway yeah all right, so next on the list is, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is a, a deck that's on everybody's list. I mean, Chain Burn, nobody wants to play against the Chain Burn deck. Unless you're also playing Chain Burn, that'd be kind of funny. But, um, like, you're playing with yourself, dude. Like, I don't understand why people, other than to troll people and to win, uh, would play this deck. Because I don't see the personal satisfaction you get other than just pissing an opponent off. And on top of that, I mean, all you're doing is basically setting a bunch of cards and playing yourself. And I mean, if I'm going to be playing against this deck, I want to be able to duel. And my 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 idea of a duel is battling it out with opponents' monsters, you know, battling through back row and stuff like that to finally get their life points to zero by battle. This deck doesn't do any of that. It really doesn't special any summoning monsters other than like oh, Jama tokens occasionally. Uh, and it just basically wants to burn you for the you know 8,000 life points without you even doing anything during your standby phase so um you know i'm not a really big fan of chain burn for that reason and honestly every single chain burn player i've ever come across has had some of the worst dueling etiquette i've ever seen in my life like for me i'm a big you know i'm big on you know if my opponent beats me and stuff like that i'm gonna give them the satisfaction of like you know getting my life points to zero and stuff like that but, you know, if, it, if things go wrong for a Chain Burn player, they usually just quit right there, they scoop right there, and they're like, okay, game two. And at that point, you're just like, okay, you're a jerk because, you know, when you were having fun and stuff like that, I didn't say, okay, well, I'm going to scoop and stuff like that. And two, why would I even want to play your deck again? Like, you might as well just be playing with yourself, literally, because, like, I'm not doing anything and you're just activating stuff during a standby phase. So, uh, Chain Burn is an easy... You know, inclusion on this list. Not very high because there are decks that I hate more. Anytime I play, you know, Chain Burn Guy and I see Chain Strike and I'm like Just Desserts and stuff like that, I'm like, oh my god, this is Chain Burn. I'm really playing a Chain Burn Guy. So, yeah. Okay. Next on this list, had to make the list, was Burning Abyss. Especially back when this deck was just really hard to deal with. Like, everything floated, everything, you know, like Raigeki was a neg if you activated it against Burning Abyss because everything floated and everything was plus for them. It pluses off of losing. I hate decks that plus off of losing. Uh, it was back row heavy. I hate decks that are back row heavy. And, you know, it was just very hard to stop. Like, outside of like macro, defissure, or making a dweller and then trying to do stuff, most likely that dweller is going to get disturbed by something. And if you, you know, like I said, the good cards like Raigeki, Torrential, Dark Hole, stuff like that were instantly bad against this deck because it literally did nothing for you unless you were able to stop those graveyard effects. So um, I was super, you know, against this deck for the longest time just because it, you know, of what it represented. It represented getting stuff for free. When I'm against the ropes, my cards let me recover when they shouldn't let when they shouldn't and back row i'm just gonna run a bunch of back row and the back row that i run actually is beneficial toward me because all my monsters get effects in the graveyard to where you neg and i plus off of losing like that's basically what burning abyss was and i was never really a fan of it never really a proponent of it granted it's it's much more manageable now we have a lot more ways of you know stopping those graveyard effects and stuff like that um and stopping the floating that occurs and stuff like that with the Burning Abyss monsters, but it still never really fully got out of my system as acceptable. I still really viewed it. Oh my God, when this thing was like when this deck was a thing, I really hated it because it was when it was first came out. There wasn't a lot of options in terms of stopping it, so uh, definitely had to put Burning Abyss on there. PK Fire, not so much. I don't really have a 
problem with DK flyers because it came at a time where, when she was manageable. But yeah. Okay, so next on this list, another deck that I really hated just because of what it did to the game, and I never really viewed it in uh, as a good change to the game was Cosmo. This deck literally made targeting irrelevant. Like this deck alone, and it also made multi destruction cards like the entire format in which Cosmo. Um, PK Fire and Pepe, like that entire format was like if you ran Raigeki and stuff like that, you'd have a risk of it being a bad card because if you played it against Cosmo, they're gonna tag out in a ship or they already had a ship and it's gonna float into another ship. And you're like, well, great, that Raigeki did me nothing. You play against Burning Abyss or anything like that, like I said, they all float. If you play against Pendulum deck, they go back to the extra deck, they come back in the next turn. So that entire format, but Cosmo also made targeting very, very irrelevant to where people started to literally take cards out of their decks because Cosmo existed. Compulse instantly became a terrible card because Cosmo exists. Book of Moon instantly became a terrible card because it exists. Torrential Tribute, Raigeki, Dark Hole became bad cards, at least bad options, because floating. These ships, when they're destroyed, they get to float from the deck to where... I just never really liked that. And then most decks, I mean, Utopia of the Lightning came out. That was the only way to really out a ship from floating other than, you know, preventing the graveyard effect. But when you summon a Dark Destroyer, 3,000 beats that, that can't be targeted, you're like, well, shit. Like, I can't really run over that right now. And if I run over it, he's just going to summon another one for the deck. And so, you know, at that point, you're like, well, I can't get, a, I can't run over him, but I can Raigeki him, and you Raigeki him, and he summons Forerunner, a 2800 beater that can't be targeted. So you're like, well, crap, I can't cast out it, I can't do a lot of things to it. So what do I, what am I gonna do now? And so Cosmo was like a big example why. I also hated Cosmo Tin Can because he just started all the shenanigans all over again. When you finally got a Cosmo player on the ropes, they'd always basically, you know, wait till you run out of attacks, and they'd summon either Strawman or Tin Can because Tin Can basically gives them another ship in hand. And he sends them to the graveyard to combo like Call of Haunted or Cosmojo and stuff like that to where you start the entire cycle over again. So I was never really a fan of Cosmo. It literally made targeting irrelevant. Like if you ran cards that targeted in your deck, you immediately had to question running them because Cosmo existed. Even in multiple destruction cards like Raigeki Dark Hole became questionable to be running in the main deck just because this deck existed. So. Um, was not a fan of Cosmo and uh, still not a fan of Cosmo regardless of, you know, where they are right now in today's meta. So, yeah. Alright, so, next on my list, uh, for, for good reason, I mean, come on, like, nobody wants to play against a Demise deck, nobody wants to play against a Barrier Statue deck, and usually they're combined. I really don't have to explain much. It's basically pretty, you know, self-explanatory. I hate decks that don't let me play. Barrier statues don't let you special summon, and they probably play Card of Demise, Moon Mirror Shield, set a bunch of mirror forces and stuff like that, so you can't like really do stuff. So, oh, not a fan of, uh, not a fan of that deck. Really doesn't require a, more of an explanation. So, uh, let's get into the next one. So, is it really, really, really any mystery that number one would be heroes? No. I mean, this is like, this deck is like the epitome of don't play Yu-Gi-Oh, don't do a fucking thing, literally sit down, scoop, don't fucking play is what heroes are. Uh, I mean, especially pre-Links when they would basically be going to Dark Law, Rafflesia, Treat Toad. Like, what do you do against that? I mean, unless you have raw spear mode in your hand, like, you really can't do anything. Dark Law, always hated him. He's probably the most... The, all the, out of all the monsters they summon, Dark Hall is easily the most hated. I mean, a one-sided Macro Cosmos gets a sniper card out of your hand, and on top of that, um, is a 2400 beater, which is still pretty good. And on top of that, they always got him backed up by back row, like strikes and mirror forces, and storming mirror force, and Rafflesia at times, and then if they're lucky enough and they drew instant fusion when Norton was still legal, they would have Dark Law, Rafflesia, Tree Toad, and just like, what am I going to do against this? Sorry, totally awesome. I always call him Treat Toad still, but I actually prefer the name Treat Toad. But yeah, I mean, Heroes for obvious reasons. I mean, doesn't let you play. Uh, I remember the only ever, because like I said, I'm a casual player, but there was actually a regional like uh, 15 minutes away from my house and I was playing Blue Eyes. 
uh, and I was actually 4-0 at that point. And uh, I beat like I beat like two metal foe. I beat a metal foe guy, a dino guy, a cosmo guy, and a uh, cyber dragon guy. And uh, in my ma next matchup, I'm like, all right, cool. And I lost a dice roll. I'm like, well, damn. And he plays a hero to live, and I'm like, oh god. Oh god, and I look at my hand, and I've got Dragon Shrine, Galaxy Soldier, and I know that, well shit, literally all these cards are turned off because I'm not going to have a graveyard because of Dark Law. Uh, so, I mean, I've had so much salt when it comes to heroes, and they pretty much shut down my, all of my decks, and I'm pretty sure they shut down a lot of other decks, uh, too, unless you're playing like Ritual Beast or something like that, but yeah, so easily number one, Mass Heroes, I don't even have to go into a deep, adequate explanation, so yeah. But yeah, that's that's my top 10 guys. Uh, let me know in the comments and suggestions if, what your opinions are if you also hate these decks. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing you guys' opinions. Thank you all for watching. Uh, if you are interested in knowing another top 10 of mine, uh, feel free to leave that in the comments and suggestions. Uh, and then I've also tried to encourage Christian and Noah who've been kind of absent from the channel lately to also do some top 10s for you guys because I'm pretty sure you like to hear their opinions and stuff too. Anyway, thanks to you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.